uh, has a, a lot of great advantages. And uh, one of the one innovations that uh, we're introducing here at the show is a method that you can cut the takeoff and landing distance by 75 percent. And so we and, and this is for an airplane that already didn't use a lot of runway. Oh, right. We're already at about 120 feet to take off. So now we're down in like 20 or 30 feet to take off and <laughs> to land. So what this does? Okay, tell is me more. We have a 12 kilowatt electric motor uh, embedded into the wing with a slot for the propeller, and we have a separate throttle for both of these motors linked together by computer. So when we take off, we can basically we can double the thrust of the aircraft. So we're starting out at nearly 200 pound thrust with the Pelini on the nose and we're adding them 150 th uh, pounds more thrust. You can carry the whole battery for this in your hand because we're only uh. using it for, say if you use it for 20 seconds, at that climb rate, you would take off in the 20, 25 feet and you would climb over your 50 foot obstacle in the first few seconds and then you turn them off and climb on the gas motor and be used just as a, sus a flight sustainer if you're doing motor gliding with this. Ah, okay. But what it does when it stops, it automatically goes to horizontal. Oh, it does, okay. And it basically disappears. Phase two of the operation is when you're coming in on your final on an approach. But if you have these uh, motors running about 20%, oh, you're going. you can turn them on a minute before on the approach at 20%. That's, that's a lot of battery, even on a handful of batteries. I'm moving and the aileron have, a little bit here for you. You have blown you. ailerons and blown tail surfaces if we put the mo motors on the tail as well. Uh, but what you have here is you have full roll control at zero airspeed. <laughs> you, can ro you can move the wing up and down w before you even take the brakes off. Zero airspeed control of the aircraft. Of course, you're not going to do that in flight, but now you, when you have these coming in at 20%, you're much closer to the stall speed you can you can make a safe approach and a normal landing you you land but uh you're waiting for the brakes to be effective with a little bit of weight to come on them and, and you have your normal rollout with as soon as you touch down with this distributed electric propulsion on demand you have the throttle which now you put in neutral just before you touch down then you put it in full reverse and you have 100 percent of the of the power going in reverse and you can have the postage stamp or helipad landing and takeoff. So you can actually go in full reverse with this. Absolutely. I mean, with these blades anyway. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Now, you know, I'm standing here looking right down the leading edge of the wing and it seems like kind of a long way back to the airplane. Are these wings longer than we saw before? Yeah. This is a brand new wing. Oh. Tell and, me about that. Uh, oh, then. It's, it's fantastic. I, I just can't stop looking at it. it there, there's nothing like this, um, this wing that is uh, 3D tapered. It's all done on the high-end 3D software and every rib is different. Every rib on the ailerons is tapered. Every rib on the flaps is tapered. The <laughs> flap is as long as the Merlin wing. It's a full-on slotted flap. Oh yeah, you You'll can see, see it hanging down there. And and it's it's just very effective. And that brings the stall speed down to the uh, part 103, 24 knot stall speed. Yeah, or, or less. Oh, yeah, that's just less. the wing. You're even not that, even without this arrangement. Right. right. No, that doesn't count. This doesn't do anything for stall speed. That just uh, accelerates the airplane. So right. that won't be on the air, the, the production Merlin or Merlin lights. That's just a research project. Sure, sure. Oh. But and and what is, you got the name on here, but I'm not sure everybody can read it. What do you call this it's thing? It's called distributed electric propulsion on demand. And because you don't, it's explain very, that. It's very difficult to fly an electric airplane to have any endurance or speed. And to carry, and all your payload is sucked up in the batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Right. So we have um, about eight pounds of battery per wing. It's basically nothing. It's four little RC packs. You <laughs> could take them out. They're mounted on this little hatch here. You can't see that comes out with uh, cam locks. That just uh, hinges down. Oh, the batter batteries are carried right yeah. here. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, they're just okay. uh, run charge the batteries in flight off the. Um, Oh, alternator oh. and it's a great candidate for electric so the number serial number two which we're starting to uh, assemble now will have electric 30 kilowatt motor on the front oh, okay so it's going to be a, if you had this option theoretically you could have a six motor part 103 legal ultralight <laughs> well there's no limit on the number of yeah. propulsion devices yeah. that was never specified yeah. uh, part of this uh, research project is to scale this up to our hyperstole which is still on the drawing board but that, that airplane will carry uh, 600 pounds 
fly close to 150 miles an hour, a ceiling of more than 20,000 feet, and it'll land and take off on a helipad. Pretty cool. And that's what we'd like to start making next year with uh, the, our uh, innovation of a D-pod. Okay, so let's go back and let's separate the two a little bit. You got Merlin Light yeah. with the, with the this will be the wing now on yes. the Merlin Light, is yes, that correct? that is, okay. that is the stock so wing. So this longer one, the one we saw before at Midwest was a somewhat shorter wing. How much shorter was it, by the way? Uh, actually, it's about five five feet on each side. Per side. Quite a bit. Okay, yeah. so quite a bit. Yeah, that's a lot. So, yeah, this is a, it's got a kind of a glider look to it yeah, already. Right. It, right. It'll be a really great uh, electric, well, either a self-launching glider or just um, ultralight for morning, evening sorties and fly around very low because that's what's great about electric. Yeah. I found that out and fly two or two, 300 feet and perfectly safe and comfortable and quiet. The, there's 20 changes to the airframe uh, all around. Okay. Uh, the big one being they're all tricycle. Ah, they're yeah. all tricycle. Right. Uh, right. Okay, uh, that's a pretty big change. Yeah, this will take off and land a lot faster with the tricycle because um, it, the power to weight ratio is fairly s significant on this. So you can't even put it in full power uh, with a tail dragger oh. and then you have to lift the tail up and then put it back down and then when you land you're limited on your braking um, mm -hmm. because uh, you could nose over so with the tricycle especially with uh, you solve a lot of problems low, with that, lower though. lower uh, flight time pilots and older people it's gonna the easier we can make it the better absolutely so that's one thing the bubble doors uh, the three uh, another big thing is that the firewall has moved forward three inches So we have really a lot of leg room. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, and of course it has if people are thinking we don't have a collar for the weight Howl is designed and the mold is being cut now for the the new Polini 303 Okay, with the firewall extended three inches for more leg room all the parts for the the production Merlin lights are cut and the assembly has already started and we'll be having uh, test flights uh, this fall with both gas and electric side by side and we'll be making the first deliveries this year. Our options for people who, who want to, who will register as experimental okay. uh, amateur built, like they can double the fuel from uh, up to uh, up nine gallons. Okay. Where is the fuel carried? Well, it's in the wing. We okay. have a 4.15 uh, gallon tank on one side and then just a wing skin on the other, but the, the tank just uh, rivets right in. You can easily double the fuel. Hey Chip, I'd like uh, for people to say, wow, that I'm, I'm intrigued by that electric. I, that, that seems to work for me on this airplane, but how do I know you really know what you're doing with electric? You know, this one's got gasoline on it. You have some history with this, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with electric, Chip? I, I love electric what, and applications that it works, like a very clean, efficient uh, ultralight or a, a motor glider. It, it's just so smooth and, and so reliable and so comfortable to fly. But uh, uh, You've been doing flying, that a little while, right? I've been flying on, on and off with electric for uh, more than five years. Oh, wow. And um, and what I learned is it's not in my wheelhouse. Uh, it, it, I needed to get um, the professionals the involved. The components are not right, in your wheelhouse. Right. I got to get, it. To get the full integration. I tried to keep up, make a, a low-cost ultralight and then a low-cost electrical system, and that, that wasn't a good combination. But, so uh, now I'm working with a, a company that is a real experts, uh, more than 15 years in electric aviation business, that are designing... A turnkey package, a plug-and-play package with one the company going to deliver all the components yeah, for everything, it? everything, and they're right Beautiful. close to where the Tech Pro Aviation, where this aircraft is made in Czech Republic, and so we're working on with them another project as well, and so now we're just adding this to it, and we'll be test flying it there, expanding the envelope, writing the, the operating manuals, and it'll be a perfect professional system that's very safe and will fly for more than an hour. Cool. All right, that's a lot of information from the uh, DEPOD, the Distributed Electric yeah. Propulsion on Demand, which is a long mouthful, but it's a cool project. And the whole airplane is a very cool project. How can we learn even more, keep up with you? You have a blog. Yeah. Where is all that found? Yeah, I do write a blog once in a while. Uh, you have to visit my webpage, aeromarine-lsa.com. Cool. And, and whenever I write a blog, I post a link to it on Facebook. So if you're following Aeromarine on Facebook, you'd get notified when the new blog comes up. Cool. All right, very good. Well, I'm going to stay on top of this airplane. I followed Chip with his development of the Merlin PSA, a white airplane on the far side over there. This one here is very intriguing. You can learn all about that and lots more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Chip and myself here at AirVenture 2021.